Hello, in this episode we're going to look at two very basic trigonometry problems which crop up quite frequently when making games. The first problem is if we have some angle, say for example 120 degrees, how to calculate a direction vector from that. The second problem is just the reverse operation. If we have a vector pointing in some direction, how to calculate this angle. Along with solving these two problems, we'll also be looking at how to convert between radians and degrees, and how to actually use these trig functions inside the Unity game engine. All right, let's start with a unit circle, which is just a circle with a radius of one centered at the origin. So if we create a pair of axes, the circle obviously cuts the x-axis at x equals negative one and x equals one, and cuts the y-axis at y equals negative one and y equals one. We can also label the angles, starting with naught degrees here on the right, and increasing anti-clockwise. Okay, now say we have a vector pointing in some direction, and all we know is that this angle over here, which we'll label theta, is equal to 120 degrees. We're trying to find the coordinates of the point where the vector touches the circumference of the circle, since those values are of course the x and y components of the vector. By drawing in these components, we get a nice right angle triangle. Now, I want to emphasize that it's technically incorrect to think of x and y as being the lengths of these two sides of the triangle, since lengths, of course, can't be negative. However, I like to think of them as representing the side lengths anyway, and I'll be referring to them as the lengths in this video, since I find it to be the most intuitive picture. All right, time to introduce three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. As you can see, the sine function takes in the angle theta and calculates the ratio y over the radius. Cos calculates the ratio x over the radius, and tan calculates the ratio y over x. So if we want to calculate this y value, we can use our sine equation to write y over r is equal to sine theta. Since the radius of the circle is equal to one, we can simplify that to y equals sine theta, and we can likewise write that x is equal to cosine theta. So that is in fact the general solution to this problem. Our vector points in the direction cos theta comma sine theta. In this example, we said that theta is 120 degrees, so we can just use a calculator to find cos 120 degrees equals negative a half, and sine 120 degrees is about 0 0.87. Before we move on to the second problem, I'd like to look at the graphs of the sine, cosine, and tan functions. So we saw that sine theta is simply the quote-unquote length of this blue line, and cos theta is the length of the green line. From this animation, you can see how these values change as theta increases. So plotting the length of the blue line as theta goes from naught to 360 degrees, we get a plot of sine theta. We can do the same thing for the green line, cosine, and we'll notice we get the same curve just offset by 90 degrees. From this, we can tell that sine theta is equal to cosine of 90 minus theta, and conversely, cosine of theta is equal to sine of 90 minus theta. Now, what about the tan graph? Well, tan theta gives us the ratio y over x, so it's equal to the blue line divided by the green line. This means that tan theta is equivalent to sine theta over cos theta. Anyway, let's plot tan theta. Unlike sine and cosine, which are both in the range negative one to positive one, tangent has a range of negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, we're going to come back to the tan graph in a moment, but for now let's take a look at problem number two. In this problem, we know the x and y components of our vector, and we're trying to figure out the angle. So in this example, we know that x is equal to negative 0.71, and y is equal to positive 0.71. Let's try solving this using the tan ratio. So tan theta is equal to y over x, therefore in this case tan theta is equal to 0.71 over negative 0.71, which of course is just equal to negative one. Let's head over to our tan graph and see if we can use it to figure out the angle. If we look at where tan theta is equal to negative one on the graph, we'll notice that there are two possibilities. Either theta is equal to 135 degrees, or it's equal to 315 degrees. 
In this case, we can tell by looking at the diagram that the correct one is 135 degrees. Now, obviously, you won't usually be manually looking up the answer on a graph. You'll instead use the inverse functions, which are arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. Now, these functions will just return one of the two possible solutions, which is a little bit inconvenient, and it's for this reason that many programming languages have got an extra function called atan2. Instead of taking in the value of y over x, it takes in the y and x values separately. To see why this is helpful, let's divide our circle into four quadrants. Obviously, y is positive in the top two quadrants and negative in the bottom two, while x is positive in the two on the right and negative in the two on the left. So if we use that atan2 function, passing in 0.71 and negative 0.71, the function can see that the y value is positive and the x value is negative, meaning that the answer must be in quadrant 2. By narrowing the search down to a single quadrant, the function is now able to find a single correct answer. Alright, so the general solution to our second problem is that theta is equal to a tan 2 of y, x. Okay, so having covered the two problems we set out to solve, I'd like to move on to radians. As you may know, radians are an alternative to degrees as a way of measuring angles. The idea of radians is as follows. If we create an arc with the same length as the radius of the circle, the angle that it makes at the center of the circle is equal to one radian. If we keep going around the circle, you'll see that we can fit about 3.14 of these arcs into a semicircle. More precisely, of course, that figure is pi. So naught degrees is simply naught radians, 90 degrees is pi over two radians, 180 degrees is pi radians, 270 degrees is one and a half pi radians, and once we reach two pi radians, we're back to zero. Knowing this, we can easily convert from degrees to radians by multiplying by pi over 180, and to go the other way around by multiplying by 180 over pi. Unity's trig functions all work in radians, as we'll see in just a bit. But first, I'd like to point out that if we're creating a 3D game, then the convention in Unity is that at naught degrees on the y-axis, a character faces forward along the z-axis. As we increase the angle, the character rotates clockwise. So we could represent this with a circle like so, which is of course different to the unit circle we've been using, where naught degrees represented a direction along the positive x-axis, and the angles increased anti-clockwise. Let's put these two circles side by side. The conversion between the two is very simple. It's just 90 minus theta. Take for example 180 degrees from this circle, to convert it, we just do 90 minus 180, which is equal to negative 90 degrees, which is of course the same thing as 270 degrees. And converting the other way is exactly the same, 90 minus 270 equals negative 180 degrees, which is the same thing as positive 180 degrees. Keeping this in mind, I'm going to go into Unity, where I have a simple player set up, just made out of a capsule, and it's holding a little cube object, which you can maybe imagine as some sort of weapon, just to show uh, what the character's forward direction is. I'm going to right-click, create a new c -sharp script, and I'll just call this trig test, and I'm going to apply that to the player object. You can then open that up, and in here, I'll start by creating a public float called angle in degrees, and then in the update method, I want to get a direction from that angle. So we saw how to do this. We can create a vector. So let's make this a vector three, call it direction is equal to a new vector three. And now we use cosine and sine. So mathf.cos of angle in degrees, and we need to convert this to radians uh, because all of the unity trig functions work in radians, as I mentioned earlier. So we do that by multiplying by pi over 180. Well, alternatively, Unity's actually gone and stored this conversion factor inside a variable called degrees to radians, which is a little bit easier to remember. So you can just write multiplied by mathf dot degrees to radians, and you can see this just stores the value of pi over 180. All right. Then on the z-axis, for this vector, let's have mathf.sine 
of angle in degrees multiplied by, once again, math f dot degrees to radians. All right, now just to see what this direction looks like, let's draw a ray. So debug dot draw ray from transform dot position in the direction that we calculated, and we can multiply it by some distance, say three, and then let's give it a color, maybe color dot green. All right, let's try that out. So I'll press play, and you can see the green line sticks out to the right uh, along the x-axis, and as we increase the angle, it goes around anti-clockwise. Now, as I was talking about earlier, if we want that direction to point forwards at zero degrees and increase uh, clockwise with the rotation, as our character does, then we have to do that 90 minus uh, theta conversion. So over here, before we multiply by degrees to radians, uh, in brackets, we have 90 minus angle in degrees, and same thing over here, 90 minus angle in degrees. If we save that now, we'll see that it works as expected. Now, recall that when we actually plotted sine theta and cos theta, we saw that cos 90 minus theta was equal to sine theta, and likewise sine 90 minus theta was equal to cos theta. So if we wanted, we could remove this uh, 90 minus business over here and here, and instead just swap cosine with sine, so make this sine on the x-axis and cosine on the y-axis, or in this case the z-axis, and you can see that this uh, is exactly the same thing. All right, so that was the first problem. Let's now look at the second problem of getting an angle from a direction. So I'm going to use the example of getting the keyboard input for the arrow keys and using that to find the character's rotation. So uh, say we get a vector three called the input direction. So it's equal to a new vector three and on the x-axis, we have input.getAxis raw, horizontal. On the y-axis, we have zero. And then on the z-axis, input.getAxis raw, vertical. And we can now normalize that to give it a magnitude of one. Uh, so it's a proper direction vector. And then we can move our character around with transform.translate. Input direction multiplied by time dot delta time. Let's just give it a speed of five, say. And then this should be relative to the world. Okay, so if we try that out, let's press play. You can use the arrow keys now to move the character around. Okay. Now, to actually set the rotation, let's create a float called input angle. And we'll set this equal to mathf dot atan2 passing in the y and x components of our directional vector, or in this case, since we're using a 3D vector, it will rather be the z and x components. So input direction dot z and input direction dot x. And a tan 2 returns the angle in radians. So we need to convert from radians to degrees, of course, by multiplying either by 180 over pi or simply using mathf dot radians to degrees. Okay, let's then write transform.eulerangles is equal to vector3.up multiplied by the input angle. So we're just rotating our character around the y-axis by the input angle. If we save that and press play, we can move around and we'll see that the uh, rotation isn't quite corresponding correctly to the input. By now, of course, that's no mystery to us. It's this whole 90 minus uh, story again. So we just add 90 minus our angle over here, and that should now work correctly. So we move around and we can verify that it is working how we want it to. The last thing I want to mention is that similar to how we could get rid of the 90 minus in this example over here by swapping sine and cosine, we can also get rid of the 90 minus over here by swapping the two components. So I can swap x with z. And if we save that now, we'll see that it works in exactly the same way. 
Okay, uh, that is everything for this video. Over the next few episodes we'll be working on our second mini-project to put all the stuff we've covered so far into practice. Until then, cheers!